it's you again. Let me guess. You're here to talk about my husband or brother. What a surprise. Why is everyone only ever interested in the stories of my husband, Captain Norris, and my brother, his business partner, Captain Neelan? <laughs> no one ever wants to hear my story. Why are we only ever interested in the boys? I've had enough. Listen, I led an interesting life, a very interesting life. It's just being a lady of the Victorian period here in St. Catharines. Not a lot of people wrote about me. You must understand how offending that is. It makes me and all Victorian women seem lazy. It makes it seem like we sat around all day drinking tea. Well, we had lots of things to do. And just because historians and academics and journalists didn't write about us in their books or papers or letters doesn't mean we weren't hard workers. They were only ever interested in James and Sylvester's endeavors. Here, a Toronto Globe article written in 1881 about James. <clears throat> of the marked men of Canada who by tact and perseverance have won fame and fortune and in doing so have contributed largely to the development of the country, few deserve so high a place as Mr. James Norris of St. Catharines. Success in the life is not always to be measured by the amount of wealth accumulated, but yet one who rises without a stain upon his honor, and without having his nature warped or his finer instincts blunted, can well claim to have achieved a large degree of true success. Not that the life of the subject of this notice has been attended with usual difficulties, for it has not but that the face may have been due chiefly to the combination of the self-reliant spirit, the faithful discharge of the duties of a lowly position, the enterprise and determination to succeed, the unblemished confidence begetting integrity, and the good judgment which knew how to grasp the skits of happy chance, which we exhibited in uncommon measure in Mr. Norris. How could one possibly compete with that? Your husband is one of few who deserves so high a place in the development of our country. When he died, a two-mile line of carriages and people stretched to the cemetery from the city. He died, and the city literally shut down. His funeral was on a Tuesday at 3 p.m. All the merchants in the city decided to close their respective places of business for the afternoon. Because my brother Sylvester died so close to New Year's Day, Reverend Kerr decided that the usual ringing in of the bells should be dispensed with and the chimes made silent until his burial. Huh. I remember when Sylvester first talked to me about his new friend, James Norris, whom he met in 1848 in Port Dalhousie aboard a schooner in dock. The two young sailors formed a liking for each other, which was cemented in the two years they spent sailing together on the same vessel. When Sylvester introduced me to James, I was very impressed. How could I not be? James and I were married soon after. I remember one night, I was finishing up the washing up after dinner with Sylvester. The two of them were sitting on the doorstep as it was too hot in the house. They were talking about buying up their own ships and doing the runs themselves instead of for other captains. They figured they could do it better and faster and make more money that way. So they entered into a verbal agreement and with their few hundred dollars went to Mr. Shakluna to purchase a vessel. He trusted them to pay him the rest of the money when they had it. But I was there, too. Where am I in the story? That's right, washing dishes. <sighs> Eventually, James said he was interested in serving in Parliament. 
The boys agreed that they had a successful run in business, but that dissolving the partnership would be for the best. They focused on their families, and James worked on getting elected. He was sent to Ottawa in 1874 and did some great work. Around the same time, my brother Sylvester was elected into our provincial parliament. He served in office until 1886. So, they were famous politicians, rich, successful businessmen, and everyone loved them. You can see how easily my story gets lost under the weight of theirs. <laughs> Next time, we talk about me, and only me. Got it? <laughs>